All right, I think it's time to get this show on the road. A very good morning to you from a beautiful autumnal San Francisco. The sun is shining here. I hope it is a nice day wherever you are today. And thank you again for joining us for this very special webinar uh, where we have a guest presenter joining us today from CW Driver. And uh, so very exciting to hear customer stories. This really is a great way to bring things to life for us. Uh, where I'm speaking to you from today at our headquarters, uh, we're in something of a bubble here. We're the ones doing all the tech, making all of this uh, technology available to our customers. It's really very exciting to hear how it actually gets applied in the real world. So I hope you'll find this an interesting and engaging session. Let's have a look at the agenda for the next hour or so. Uh, so we're going to go through a quick introduction to Cisco Meraki. We want to make sure you all understand who we are and how we got to where we are today. And then we'll get into having a look at the technology architecture. This is a cloud-based solution, and that may be new to some of you. What we want to do is take a few moments to explain not only how that works, but also why we chose to go down this particular path. If you are new to Meraki, it's very exciting to have you along today, and we can't wait to show you how we do things. And we'll then get into the uh, presentation itself with CW Driver and our special guest uh, uh, who's joining us today, and we'll take a look at the uh, dashboard as well, so you get a, a sense of what it's like to be a network administrator uh, working on these networks, and we'll talk about some of the ways in which uh, the, the dashboard and the Meraki solution has helped CW Driver with its business. We'll have a recap of the various product families from Meraki. This really is a cloud-managed IT uh, solution now, so it broadens out even beyond networking. So it'd be interesting to have a quick look at the other components of the portfolio. And then, of course, we'll have an opportunity at the end for some questions. As we go through the presentation, there is a Q&A panel available to you, and I encourage you to ask any questions that come up uh, during the presentation. Hopefully we'll have time to have a look at some of those questions. Obviously if you have questions for our guest presenter as well, uh, then please just tap away in that Q&A panel and we'll get to the questions. We'll share what we can with you with the time we have available at the end. I'm very happy to announce that for IT professionals who are joining us for the first time today, you will qualify for a free Cisco Meraki 802.11n access point and this comes together with a three-year cloud management license. This is a fantastic opportunity for you to get your hands on some of our hardware, but even more importantly than that, and the real reason that we do this, we want to give you the time and the space to be able to try this out for yourself, to see if it really is going to be a good fit that's going to work well for you. We really can't think of a better way of doing it than just simply giving you a piece of hardware. There is no wireless controller with Meraki whatsoever, so you just need this AP, and uh, give it some power, give it an internet connection, and you're off to the races. Um, we so very, very happy to be able to make this offer to you. We do have some eligibility details for this offer, and you can find those on our website at meraki.cisco.com forward slash free AP. And we just ask that you please give us a call to confirm your shipping information. We do want to make sure that we get the correct address uh, to send that access point out to. Uh, so you can find contact details for how to reach out to us in the reminder email that you received for joining today's webinar. Alternatively, if you have a look at our website at meraki.cisco.com forward slash contact, uh, there's telephone numbers on there that you can use to, uh, to reach out to us so we can get that AP shipment set up. Okay, so let's get into a look at Cisco Meraki and get some background in here. What we have to offer the marketplace is a complete cloud-managed networking and IT solution. And it really encompasses everything that you need to build a local area network, plus some of the things that we actually run on that network as well. So our solution encompasses wireless networking, switching to connect everything together, security appliances and SD-WAN to connect sites together and to also uh, provide comprehensive security for your local area networks. We have a communications offering in the form of Meraki phone. Uh, we have enterprise mobility management. This is for taking control of any uh, mobile devices that you issue out as an IT department to your staff, your students, your employees. Uh, so things like iPads and uh, iPhones and laptop computers, these can all be controlled and managed with that enterprise mobility management software. And then we also just very recently announced a Meraki camera as well, a security camera. So really exciting addition to the portfolio. 
So you can see that we're really broadening out, applying the success that we've achieved in the networking space, the same kind of management experience, which has really been the secret of our success to other areas of IT. We started business in 2006, so we've been around for a whole decade now, and uh, we were formed out of a research project that our founders undertook whilst they were students at MIT in the early 2000s. Their project involved putting a bunch of access points on rooftops in the Cambridge, Massachusetts area and working out some very sophisticated mesh networking algorithms for those wireless APs. At the same time, they discovered a new and interesting way of managing, centralizing the management of those access points in software. So without using a physical box to do it, something called a wireless controller, we established we could do all this stuff in software. So it was a relatively simple leap to go from that concept to let's host this on a cloud solution and build a, a business around this. And at the time, cloud was almost unheard of in the IT space. And so it ju was just starting to become a thing in the, in the public realm. We were starting to use services like Gmail for our, for our email services. And over time, cloud has become the most overhyped term in the history of IT, but we were in right at the beginning. So we're very much early pioneers in this space. Cisco recognized our uh, preeminence in cloud managed networking in 2012. So we were acquired into Cisco uh, at the, the end of that year. And since then, really, it's been explosive growth for Meraki. We have been able to reach into all the corners of the globe with the help of the Cisco marketing machine. And we now have some really significant deployments out there, well over 75,000 active, unique customers, and over a million uh, network devices connected to the Meraki cloud at any one time. Our solution is built around out-of-band cloud management. What you do as a network administrator, instead of telnetting or connecting with a, a dedicated GUI uh, to the equipment that you use and its IP address directly, uh, you actually instead connect to the cloud. So you just type in dashboard.meraki.com to a web browser on any device, anywhere where you have an internet connection, and you have a login after which you are then able to see, monitor, and configure your network equipment, all of your Meraki gear. This is a beautifully flexible way of working. And once you get used to the idea that you can literally jump on anybody's computer and uh, see what's happening with your network, troubleshoot things if you need to from Pro literally anywhere in the world, uh, you won't be turning back from that point. This is an out-of-band solution. So uh, what we're doing here is just sending the voice traffic to and from, sorry, excuse me, let me re rewind there. What we're doing here is just sending the management traffic back and forth between the cloud and the Meraki equipment itself. And this is a very low bandwidth connection. It's running at about one to one and a half kilobits per second per Meraki device. So that enables us to maintain that heartbeat to send configuration changes to the Meraki gear if we need to do that. And then in the other direction to monitor what that gear is doing. The user traffic, in other words, the traffic you generate as you work on the network day to day, uh, this is just going to go direct to its destination IP address. It does not pass through the cloud. So it's a very important point. It's one that we often get asked by people who are new to this uh, architecture. Does my traffic go through the cloud? Absolutely not. This is an out of band solution. So to underline that, we have gone out and achieved some very important uh, industry certifications. So for example, here in the United States, we are fully HIPAA compliant, so patient data confidentiality is trusted to Meraki. Also, we are PCI compliant to level one, which is the most stringent level of PCI compliance. Another question that we often get asked is, what happens to my Meraki network if it's cloud managed? What happens if I lose my connection to the cloud? And of course, this is quite a rare occurrence that we have uh, internet outage nowadays. It uh, used to be something that happened reasonably often when I was a, a junior network engineer many years ago. Uh, but nowadays, thankfully, we have reliable internet connections and we're able to very easily put multiple connections in if we need to, to take that to a, a redundant uh, design. 
From a cloud perspective, we operate multiple data centers, both here in the United States, but also right around the world as well, enabling us to ensure that if any one data center um, goes offline for any reason, we're automatically able to reconnect all that Meraki gear to an alternate data center so nothing gets lost and you're able to continue working with your equipment. So a very efficient architecture which scales beautifully. We have some customers running as many as 10,000 devices within their Meraki network. Um, so really great efficiency. We've designed all of the hardware and software ourselves so they work seamlessly together uh, with great efficiency. So we can scale up without any loss of performance. There's a great website at the bottom of the page here. If you are new to Meraki, it's definitely one worth uh, visiting when we're done today. And that is meraki.cisco.com forward slash trust. And we really think that one will help to uh, underline and give you confidence if you are new to this type of architecture. So why are we doing it? The world of IT has evolved very significantly and uh, we're almost getting to a point where I don't need to explain this now because we're all living this day to day. Uh, all of us carrying around smartphones, there are now billions and billions of these things uh, online around the world, uh, tablet computers as well and laptop computers. And it, it's changed so much from the early days of networking where you had a very simple deterministic environment. You just typically had maybe uh, wired connections to, uh, a, to the network and you were just running two or three networked applications. So it was very easy to design a network around this. And most of the time those networks, you really didn't need to worry about performance issues because the requirements of them were so low. Today, of course, we have all these devices all these devices are running many applications, and those applications are all demanding something from our networks. So from our perspective, it makes it all the more important to be able to clearly see what is going on on these networks, and then uh, to be able to make changes easily to the configurations to make sure that your more mission critical and more sensitive applications, and I'm thinking of things like video, voice over IP, more demanding of network resources, we need to make sure they get the priority that they need in order to operate smoothly. We never want to hear those fateful words, the network's slow, and I guarantee if we've got any network engineers on the line today, uh, at some point you will have heard that exact term. So we definitely want to avoid that, and we can do that by better understanding what's running in our networks. In my experience, uh, most of the network gear that's out there today can tell us what's going on on the network and what applications are in use, but in many cases, far too many cases in my opinion, uh, it is just too difficult to do it. And so no surprise to see that many IT administrators just don't ever bother. And they just uh, really are flying blind and don't have a clear understanding of what's operating on their networks. So that may be fine in some cases, but in a busy environment, this is really uh, something we need to stay on top of. So our mantra at Meraki is simplicity and making it easier to do exactly that. One of the other things we're very well known for here is rapid feature velocity. We uh, have a habit of reaching uh, uh, shipping time very quickly for our products, so we are, our innovation and turnaround time is very quick to get uh, new products out to the marketplace. But what we are interested in doing is then turning around and listening to your feedback, our customers' feedback around how they're using the product to help us determine how we should take things forward. What additional features do we need to add to these products that are going to make your lives easier? We can certainly imagine many of the required features before we ship the product in the first place, but there's no better source of, of information to make sure that it's beautifully honed around customer requirements than to listen to those customers themselves. When we get to the demo, if you look closely in the bottom right-hand corner of every dashboard screen, the management tool we use, you'll find a feedback tool. We call it the Make-A-Wish box. And you can send feedback directly to our engineers from that box so any new capability that you think would be useful, anything you don't understand about the page that you're looking at, uh, you can send us feedback directly. And our turnaround time uh, is, is normally very fast for this. So we, we're interested in looking at patterns. If we see uh, the same kind of requests coming in multiple times for the same features, then clearly we have an indication there that we should uh, be paying that feature some attention. Okay, so it's time to turn things over and to introduce uh, Blaine Crawford, who is joining us today from CW Driver, a very exciting company that's been working with Meraki for some time now. So Blaine, if you'd like to uh, uh, introduce yourself to the audience. 
great to have you on board. Good morning to you. Thank you, Simon. Good morning to you, too, and everybody, or afternoon, depending where you are. Um, my name is Blaine Crawford, and I've been the IT director at CW Driver for approximately the last three years. And uh, I've been involved with IT probably for the last 18 years, and mostly with large construction companies. So I'm very well versed in the challenges of uh, construction companies. Very interesting. And let's have a look at uh, CW Driver itself, Blaine. Very interested to understand a little bit more about your business. Sure. CW Driver, we've, we're very proud of the fact that we have uh, California Contractor License 102. Um, that just goes to show our longevity and you know how strong a uh, entity we are in the California region for general this means, this means that, uh, that, that CW Driver was the 102nd company to be licensed ever. Is that what we're saying for this, for this purpose? Sure. Once they actually wow. start to license contractors or require a license, um, if you were to get a new license today, you'd be somewhere in the million and upwards of there. So that is wow. one of our... Very impressive. So I can see there that you've got uh, a huge amount of uh, restoration space. What do we mean by that exactly? This is the, this, the, the scale of the sites that you're working on? Yeah, CW Driver, we have a very diverse clientele. Uh, we'll do anything from historical renovations, restorations, uh, to public entities such as major universities in the California area. Uh, we do a lot of commercial, uh, municipality buildings, you know, civic centers. Um, we're involved with a lot of gaming type facilities. You know, these are very large, you know, upwards of $300 million projects that we work on. But um, yeah, we have a lot of installed workspace in the California, mostly Southern California region. Nice, and it's a little bit warmer down there. So are you, uh, are you up in Northern California as well? No, I'm actually based in San Diego, California, but we do have an office up in the San Jose Bay Area. That's been pretty busy. Very nice. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your IT team. Sure. Our IT team, um, you know, I came into the company three years ago, and the IT team today is very different from when I first started. Uh, we're a young, a relatively young IT team. We bring a lot of energy and, um, you know, talent to the table. And honestly, it's probably one of the most probably inexperienced teams I've worked with, but probably one of the most talented ones. And we've been able to accomplish a lot in the last three years. And of course, Meraki uh, was one of our showcase products to the company. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so you're responsible for all the aspects of IT, so not just the networking uh, side of it? Right. Nice? Yeah, I'm responsible for the daily operations of, you know, the department um, and as well as the future direction of the uh, technology in our company. So it covers a broad spectrum of responsibilities, but uh, with a strong team, you know, it's, it's a pretty rewarding job right now. Yeah, I should think it is. Okay, so let's let's have a look at some of the challenges that you were experiencing, I guess, uh, as you were forming this team and and uh, starting to work with IT. Uh, how did how did those challenges sort of come about? What did you run into? <laughs> uh, that that's a whole story unto itself, but I'll try and be brief. So yeah, when I started three years ago, there was a lot of work to uh, to accomplish, and there were a lot of crises, I might say, a lot of fires to put out. And one of them was the WAN architecture. And not to sound cavalier about it, but actually this was probably one of our low hanging fruit to remediate at the time. There was a variety of problems and this was the one that I took on first. It was to pretty much redo our whole entire WAN architecture. And the WAN architecture of a construction company, you know, we, we have the main offices, but you also have to understand we probably have upwards of 50 remote uh, project sites active at any one time. And those project sites, some of them could be even larger than our headquarters. At it. And we might have some that are just one person that's a mobile uh, user working out of their truck. So we have a wide variety of um, connectivity issues to contend with. 
So you mentioned on here uh, that the WAN architecture was out of date. What what kind of technologies were you running on the wide, wide area? Uh, it was, you know, the standard industry type of architectures, you know, the major firewall, universal threat management uh, vendors. The problem was that they were, you know, end of life products. They were no longer supported. They were no longer available for sale. We had to pretty much scrounge around the internet to find uh, devices when we needed to set up new job sites. Um, it was a, it was really challenging to support at the time. So. Yeah, and I, I can see there that you were working with many different vendors as well. So having to figure out how to how to actually work everything, and I, I I've had to do the same thing myself in the past, and it, it can be a quite a chore just to establish how to do simple things that you need to get done with the, with the equipment you have. Exactly, and especially when you're in kind of a um, pricey mode where you're trying to fix right fast. <laughs> so definitely, I love this comment on here about uh, end of life equipment and replacements. Having to look around on eBay to find uh, find what you need to keep things working. Yeah, I think that statement kind of epitomizes the situation you're in. It's almost comical, but it was pretty serious. So, yeah, I think that was probably the overall <laughs> crux of the situation that you know, brought us to where we are now. All right. Okay, well, let's let's have a look at uh, how uh, you came across Meraki. Maybe, maybe just give us a sense of how you heard about us uh, the first time around and how you, how you actually got involved with us and, how, and what kind of impact we were able to make for you. Sure. It's actually a little bit of a humorous story from my perspective, but, you know, I just started with the company and um, I was going around making introductions to the new, you know, the staff that I was going to be responsible for. And I pulled up to our construction yard which is where we rent out all of our equipment to the various project sites. And even before getting out of the car, I was, I was uh, introduced to a young person um, who's now my network administrator telling me about this new cool product that's cloud-based and you know, make job site setups really easy. You know, I hadn't even had time to get my hands around what I was going to take on and hear somebody tell me about Meraki and I'm just like, yeah, sure, this is great, sounds good, let's do it. And, you know, basically that's the gist of how I was introduced to Meraki. I had not really known anything about it up until that point. So did you get a, get onto a trial or a webinar? How did it all start for you? Do you remember? So, yeah, so at that point, you know, we agreed to let's put some of these you know, the smallest Meraki device, uh, the Z1 teleworker units out at a couple of our job sites. And from there, it just expanded, you know, as new job sites were rolling online, we just kept purchasing those products. And, you know, probably today we don't have too many more Z1s at our job sites because we've kind of been progressing up the product line. But that's how it all started out. Okay, so it looks like we've got a pretty good story here on the uh, looking at the the details on the slide. So maybe if you could just walk us through the the experience, uh, maybe with some of your own recollections when you first saw the uh, the Meraki interface as well. Sure. Um, well, just to expand on the beginning, just to bring us into this situation more clearly. So we were also tied into. After I dug into the network a little bit more, I found that we were tied into a lot of MPLS contracts for all of our major sites, including our co-located data center. So um, that was one of the first things we did was to renegotiate all our contracts to just dedicated internet circuit connections. And having you know Meraki available at our major uh, regional offices made that transition very easy. So, so as we kind of transition into a more traditional self-hosted VPN coming off of MPLS circuits, uh, that's when you know I really discovered the great usefulness of the Meraki dashboard and the intuitive interface, which really brought you know unprecedented visibility into our network, you know, better than I have ever seen before at any other company that I worked at. That's a good story. Uh, so 
you thought of it, so, so you thought of this really as a network in a box because you had a complete. Uh, what was the actual equipment that you you had deployed at project sites, uh, and still do, I guess. So what the network in a box is referring to is that you know after we pretty much cleaned up our WAN architecture of the regional offices, and we had pretty much gotten our job sites under control with the standardized deployment of devices, we were trying to take it to the next level of standardization, take it to the next level of a, you know of a professional presentation at the job site. Because, you know, there's nothing more unsettling than to walk into a job site trailer and see a mess of wires and you know, all your your network equipment, you know, <laughs> you know, standing on a fold-up metal chair. So we wanted to take it to the next level of present, to, you know, of, of having a nice presentation because, you know, that's symbolic of how your IT is to the user. So we came up with something that we called network in a box. And basically it's, a, you know, put in all of the equipment that we require at a job site into a nicely arranged, nicely organized and portable uh, package. Something like what you would use, you know, to transfer, you know, your concert equipment if you were in a rock group going from road right. to show. Right, sort of like one of those racks on wheels. Right. And we've, you know, consolidated down into even something even smaller. It's more like a suitcase size for our, our job sites. And basically we can ship them out anywhere in the, you know, where one is needed and almost make it a self-service network setup, which our service desk can walk you know, any tech savvy user at the job site through to get them hooked up and online. And what really is, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, so yeah, once, once our job sites are online, then the rest of the job site setup can take place, you know, via remote access tools and remote assistance tools. So this is a, a kind of a standardized uh, rack, is that what we're, we're saying here? So you're sort of replicating this multiple times to keep things easy for, for the admins back at uh, headquarters, I guess? Correct. And it also allows us to have a standard setup, which allows our service desk to be able to support every job site, because the setup is going to be consistent across all 40 to 50 job sites. So what it consists of, you know, is an MX device, a LAN switch, a UPS device, and that's pretty much everything that's needed right now at our job sites. Yeah, and and for anybody who's joining us uh, who is new to Meraki, the the MX appliance, just to, to give you an idea, this does encompass uh, a lot of different functionality. It's uh, really comprehensive. When when I saw Network in a Box on the screen here, I almost thought that that was referring to the MX because it almost is that. Uh, in, in its own right, in the fact that it has the site-to-site -site VPN, it has the uh, comprehensive uh, threat management for uh, intrusion detection and prevention, firewalling, uh, and so on, and it also uh, pr provides the Wi-Fi coverage with some of the models uh, that can be used at a site as well. Is it actually the uh, is it the Wi-Fi based models that you're you're using yourselves, Blaine? Uh, yes, in very rare instances, we'll have a separate standalone um, wireless device such as EMR. Yeah, so that makes sense. When you when you need to expand, uh, the, the MX itself is able to provide uh, Wi-Fi coverage and will do so over a pretty generous sized area. But if you do need to go to a larger construction site, uh, then it would typically be the case that you'd deploy um, our, our regular wireless portfolio there and have that working through a regular regular MX. So that gives you the flexibility if you are working across sites of different sizes as, as uh, CW Driver is clearly doing. Great story. And so I assume this has all been working very well for you, uh, Blaine, over time. How long has this been in operation now? Um, we've been using Meraki for a solid three years now. And it's been very reliable. It's been almost worry-free. You know, I can't recall an instance where we've lost contact to the cloud other than from our own, you know, our own issues on site with, you know, internet outages. So it's been very reliable. It's taken a, in the very beginning when I started, it took a huge weight off of my shoulders knowing that, you know, we had um, all this equipment in place and we had brought our, uh, WAN infrastructure to a pretty stable condition. That's really good to hear. Um, just out of curiosity, how are you actually bringing internet into the into construction sites? Uh, 
well, that's one of the unique challenges of a construction company, and that's that's why I always say that construction IT is a little bit different animal. Um, we have all different types of bandwidth, uh, ISP provisions at the job site, anywhere from you know cellular air cards all the way up to you know fiber circuits. It just depends on what the availability is at that location, and that is one of our biggest challenges. Yeah, that was what prompted the question because I know the the MX family has the ability to plug in a, a cellular data card to get your uh, wide area connectivity either for a failover or indeed as the primary connection. So I just wondered if you were making use of that in some cases. Yes, we're making very good use of that. And actually, our headquarters, which has most of our users or is our largest user base, um, it's very challenging to get internet connections to that office and. We almost don't have a backup solution other than a, you know, a Verizon air card stuck in our MX100 at the headquarters building. So. Kind of expensive when, you, I'm sure, when you need it, but hopefully not too often. Right. Okay, so the, the state of play today is that we have a, a standardized, centralized managed network. So obviously you've been able to, uh, it sounds like you've really been able to replicate uh, very effectively. Um, but you've got some different models in there as well. Do you want to talk us through the different kinds of Meraki equipment that you've actually got deployed right now and the features you're making use of? Uh, sure. Uh, at all of our regional offices, we have at least an MX80 deployed. At the larger regional offices that have the better bandwidth, um, you know, 100 meg symmetrical circuits, we deploy the MX100. And at our data center, we have the MX400 acting as our VPN concentrator, whereby all the job sites come into the data center. All of our regional offices also come into the data center. Um, so regional offices, we always try to provide a backup circuit, and the Meraki MX devices make it really easy to configure that failover, whether you want load balance failover or you just want to have it on hot standby. Uh, no special expertise needed. You pretty much just plug in your circuits and you click on the boxes on how you want that backup circuit to behave. Um, our job sites, like I said earlier, we started out deploying the Z1 teleworker or telecommuter devices, but what we've discovered is that we really want to have those extra security features, not only at our regional offices, but also deployed to all of our job sites now. And I don't think there's probably anybody listening that would not agree that, you know, security, cyber threat is one of our main, um, was one of our main sleep deprivation, you know, problems happening in the IT world right now. So we're in the process of converting over all our Z1 devices to MX64 devices with the wireless model. And we're pretty much using everything and anything security related. We love the traffic shape and capabilities. Um, that was probably one of the most eye-opening things was to see exactly what was running on our networks. And, um, you know, in the old days, we'd had to have, you know, maybe three different boxes to accomplish what we accomplished with the single MX device. So that's really been very helpful, um, you know, there might be some that like the separation of functionality, but for myself right now, I'm becoming more of a believer in the single box uh, solution just for standardization and cost control. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it's always a trade-off, but I think uh, I think back to when I was a network engineer, obviously I was concerned about redundancy and, and uh, being able to provide if, if a box does go offline. So if you are putting a lot of functionality through a single box, it's obviously going to be a, a concern. I think the stability of modern modern hardware is very high, so it's, it's pretty rare that we have problems. And for very critical sites, it is possible to set these uh, security appliances up in a, an active-active uh, way in which uh, we can ensure that there's a constant service, uh, if, even if we lose an entire box. So good to have that in the back pocket. Are you, you, you mentioned on the on the slide here, we've got mention of uh, the auto VPN functionality. Uh, have you ever yourself uh, configured uh, VPNs the hard way, the traditional way, and seen the difference with the Meraki equipment? Yes, yes, I definitely had memories of those days. Um, <laughs> actually using the Cisco VPN solution, you know, probably 10 years ago, and 
it it was a little bit of a struggle, um, whether it was a technical struggle or just finding your passwords. And you know, once I saw the auto VPN in action, I was like, where was this ten years ago when I needed it? You know, when I was trying to set this up. So that has been a huge um, a huge benefit of this uh, architecture that Meraki's you know given us. And you know, some people might like to have more control of their VPN setup, but you know, I, the way we use it, this this is a perfect solution for us. We don't need any special, um, you know, iOS knowledge, and you know, we don't even need, you know, a really microscopic insight into what's going on. I mean, we know the theory of it, but the auto VPN feature is probably one of the major selling points to me when I first. Uh, looked at the Meraki equipment. Yeah, and I, I think you explained that so nicely because uh, the truth is that, you know, in some cases there may be particular bespoke requirements for a VPN. Uh, it may be that you don't have the luxury in every case of being able to connect Meraki to Meraki. Uh, so fortunately, it is possible to still connect to traditional uh, VPN equipment as well. Um, but they're really the configuration simplicity it was it was uh, i think the thing which really blew me away uh, the most when i joined meraki uh, quite a while ago now uh, but that, i think it remains to this day my favorite feature just to being able to bring up a vpn in something like 15 20 seconds is uh, is quite refreshing and hard to believe until you see it for yourself yes i definitely agree with that statement even the redundancy of the vpn connections proved to be very very um, solid and reliable Particularly at our job sites, when those connections, you know, when a tractor trailer or a backhoe digs up our internet connection, uh -huh. once they repair it, it comes back online almost trouble trouble free. So I can imagine that's a, a, a common hazard in a, a construction site. Just yeah, it's, it's, it's a that daily means. occurrence. <laughs> it seems. So. Great. Okay, so uh, also some uh, wireless access points as well. So you were obviously uh, deploying these in slightly larger locations where you need a little bit, a little bit more coverage. Uh, do you want to talk about how you have your APs set up? Um, any of the features that you're particularly making use of there? Sure. Um, that was another one of our network um, components that was kind of in disarray, and. The Meraki MR devices, you know, again, I was looking for quick fixes, and so I decided to go with the MR just because it integrated with everything else we were doing, and it it proved to be that solid quick fix for us. Um, we were previously with a radius type of uh, Wi-Fi infrastructure, which we kind of um, had had to dumb down and just use the WPA personal right now, but we're in the process now of we're going to be redoing our whole Wi-Fi infrastructure, and it's still going to be, you know, uh, based on the Meraki devices, but now we're just going to bring it to that next level of security. So I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that, yeah, we're not quite where we want to be yet with our Wi-Fi, but that is on our radar as one of our next priorities. So That's cool. So, so how are you planning to, uh, to actually implement that? You're going to have a centralized policy server, like an Active Directory at headquarters or something like that? Yes, exactly. We're in the process of upgrading our Active Directory domain, which will include, you know, all new radius services. And so with the Meraki's in place, it's just really a quick, you know, couple of configuration settings. And, you know, they, they're all managed uh, centrally from the dashboard, so it's going to be really easy, whereas maybe, you know, in our previous environment, it would have been... Um, a little bit of an undertaking to accomplish it in quick order. So um, definitely, it's made our it's given us a lot of flexibility. So you mentioned here you've got uh, two or three different SSIDs. So how are you using those? And, and I'm assuming they have a slightly different configuration setup as well. Yeah. So we require to have our job sites, you know, both a guest network and our private network. So we have, you know. Probably about three different SSIDs that we use consistently across all our job sites, and it's allowed you know our mobile workers to go from one site to the next because we do a lot of um, you know staff uh, reassignments you know to meet the job 
requirements at the different phases of construction. So that's really made it very simple for our users to go from one job to another. And, you know, we've tried to standardize not only, you know, as few SSIDs as possible. And um, it's very easy to manage from the Meraki dashboard. So Perfect. that's a great benefit. So. All right, we've got a nice little summary here. Great quote. <laughs> So this is this is the actual map of your uh, of your network showing the different locations. Yeah, and as you can see, we're kind of concentrated in the Southern California uh, yeah. region, where we have an office in the San Jose region, and there's actually a few more job sites up there that don't look like they're showing up, but um, it's getting busy up there. So, and that's the thing, we don't have any IT staff in Northern California. Everything is done back here from Mission Control in Southern California. I love the way you call it Mission Control. What a great name. That's, well, that's what it feels like. <laughs> and that's what, you know, the dashboard makes it. Right. Okay, so let's uh, let's um, switch gears slightly. Uh, Blaine has very kindly given us permission to uh, show you all uh, what the uh, dashboard looks like on his own uh, network. So what I'll do now is flip across to my web browser and you get a chance to see what it's like to, uh, to work on a real uh, Meraki Network, so let me just log back in here. You'll notice this is just my regular Chrome web browser. I've got far too many tabs open. Uh, seems to be working okay though. And uh, so all I do here is just log in. Uh, it's obviously a secured connection. We do also support two-factor authentication for the login here. Uh, so we are properly protecting this uh, this login. Obviously it's uh, kind of like logging into your Gmail. It's a great thing to, uh, to apply as much protection as you can uh, to that. So when I log in, uh, here I'm able to to get into uh, one of Blaine's uh, environments, and Blaine, feel free to uh, to drive me in terms of uh, which networks you think are particularly interesting. I found this one with a bunch of clients on uh, Cal Poly. So that would be one of our public university clients. We do a lot of work for Cal Poly, and those job sites are real easy to get provisioned because typically we just piggyback off of the school's massive bandwidth connections. So. Um, that's why this site can support as many clients as you see. But what might be more interesting to look at is possibly our data center, which is the MX400. So if you go to the office. Uh, let's have a look here. Where am I looking at? Keep going down, you'll see all our main offices. Ah, okay, here are the others. And then MX400, which will be our data center co-location. There we go. So from there, if you go to the VPN page, you can see all of our job sites online right now. Okay, let's do that. So we'll have a look at the uh, VPN status. So this, by the way, uh, for those of you joining us today, this banner here is a common way in which we communicate any upcoming uh, firmware updates that we're, we're scheduling for the equipment. We make life a lot easier in terms of firmware updates. So rather than uh, you having to manually download the firmware and apply it yourself on a box-by-box -box basis. That's what I had to do when it was my turn uh, a few years ago. Uh, now you, all you need to do is just schedule it. So you just tell us when you uh, want that, that update to happen. Uh, the firmware will be updated and downloaded uh, downloaded in the background and then at the appropriate time obviously we'll need to reboot that so the box can start operating with that firmware. And you can always change this time if it's not convenient uh, as you can see in the messages on here. Yeah, so here is the, the VPN status page. This lets us see uh, all of the different uh, job sites that we have connected from this MX400. And we're looking at it from the perspective of that MX400. And you can see here uh, the names of those in the various different uh, locations. On the list down here, if I hover my mouse over specifics, then you get to see how the graphic changes. So you can see the relative volume of uh, data that's flowing between these different locations. We're obviously interested in things like uh, latency and usage so that we can see, uh, you know, just kind of performance that we're getting. Within California, we would expect latency to be very low, uh, so we shouldn't run into any difficulties there. Okay, so that's the, that's the list of those different uh, VPNs that we have in place. And you can see this is all hyperlinked, so it's very easy for me to jump around uh, to go and look at the boxes at the other end of this VPN. And let's show you how easy it is to set these things up as well. So if we go to the site-to-site uh, the -site VPN configuration, 
I'll just show you here uh, how this has been set up. So again, we're looking at it from the perspective of this MX400, the one that's sitting in the, in the data center. And we have this environment set up as a mesh environment. So in other words, this MX400 is a hub within a mesh networking environment. And that simply means all sites are connected to each other. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. So you can have a spoke configuration where you just have everything pointing back to the uh, back to the headquarters. Obviously, that has a slight impact on the uh, the flow of traffic between those sites. Just feel free to jump in at any time, Blaine, if there's anything you'd like to point out. I'm just uh, kind of demoing it from a oh, generic right. perspective otherwise. Uh, what you can also see on this page is that we've integrated an Azure uh, VPN connection. Right. Which is a third party, you know, VPN. Um, it was fairly, fairly easy to do. Um, that basically connects our data center up to our DR environment in Azure. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a great example. Thanks for pointing that out because that's a really great example of how we can integrate very effectively with third parties. We do the same thing ourselves. We also connect to a couple of the cloud services which use a standard IPsec-based VPN. So there's no uh, inhibition to, to doing that if it's required. Once you've set up your site-to-site -site VPN, it's really as easy as just determining which of your local area subnets you want to share with uh, another site. So you can see that we've done that here. And literally, that's it. You click Save, and the boxes that are all configured with the same uh, connections are going to just uh, automatically connect to one another. And we're able to do this because they're all managed through the same interface, so it keeps things really simple. Uh, why don't you jump over to one of our other offices, like the San Diego MX80, mm -hmm. and I can show you how we have our backup circuits configured. You know, anybody that, you know, has their CCNA or CCNPs, they could probably appreciate um, how much easier it is to um, configure, you know, backup circuits. Um, so what we've done with our backup circuits is we use it for, you know, in a non-failure uh, situation, we use it for our internet offload and configuring that with Meraki makes it extremely easy to do. And so, uh, so you got that configured under addressing in VLANs, would that be correct? I believe it's either that or traffic shaping. I can't recall right now, but. Uh, okay, let's have a quick look. Let's see how we have that set up. Actually, yeah, why don't you go to traffic shaping? Okay, let's have a look at that. So there we have it. So um, we've disabled load balancing, but we do have an internet traffic preference rule that tells us that all HTTP traffic will go over the backup link and not the main uh, circuit, which is our VPN traffic. That's really nice, Get, making, making best use of the available connections you have. Uh, one of the nice recent additions on the security appliances is the ability to have a dual active VPN as well between locations. And you can even uh, set up rules which choose the best forwarding path for things like voice over IP. And it'll actually change the forwarding path if there are any, if there's any kind of diminution in the quality of your uh, site to site connections. It's really nice. And this came about, Simon, because in the beginning, you know, we're a very Citrix dependent type of network. We rely on a lot of remote access applications. And so what we found via the Meraki dashboard is that a lot of internet traffic was choking out, you know, our network bandwidth and, you know, making our Citrix connection inconsistent. And so we were able to, um, you know, do various traffic shaping rules and offload all of that internet traffic and protect our business critical traffic. That's very nice. And, and I see here you've got a configuration for traffic shaping. So you've got some, some is it, are these bespoke apps you, that you use for your business? Yeah, that port 1494 is the Citrix ICA protocol. Okay. You've got a better memory than I have. <laughs> Still fresh in the mind. Very nice. Okay, so I'm uh, keeping an eye on the time. It's starting, the clock is ticking very fast, as uh, unfortunately always happens. Let's just quickly show uh, our audience what the general day-to-day -day, uh, views look like. So things like the client's view, being able to see d information about uh, all of the clients are connected to the network. Really a uh, very powerful tool indeed. We've got 68 client devices here, and it's easy for me to search 
for certain things. So for example, I could say, uh, just show me the Windows devices and just tell me the ones which are online right now. So just by putting in that search, I can see that I've got 21 uh, Windows devices connected right now. It looks like they all have wired connections, uh, Ethernet connections. And uh, if I want to, I can dive into any one of these. They're all hyperlinks, so I can get a little bit more information. Let's get rid of that for a second. And uh, okay, so that's all good. Up here we have the applications pie chart. So this, if I click this pie chart, I get this really nice drop down, which shows us the uh, application types that are in use on this network. This is incredibly valuable information. Remember I said uh, that it's so important to be able to keep on top of uh, what is happening with your network to keep it running nice and smoothly and ensure that your more uh, sensitive applications get the priority they need. Here is how you can easily find out uh, what is going on. You don't need to have a PhD in networking to understand what's going on here. These are all terms and names that we're familiar with. And it's very common to see, and, and definitely very similar in the Meraki office, it's things like storage, it's things like real time music streaming services, things like that. Pretty much any network that you point this at, you're going to find the same kind of thing. Um, they, those tend to be the higher bandwidth applications, so no surprise to see those at the top of the list there. Okay. All right, so what I'll do now is just jump back to the slides, and I think we'll just uh, start moving things towards a conclusion, hopefully have a little bit of time for questions. Uh, so just bear with us for another moment. So just to recap, the Meraki full stack, we've talked today about uh, the MR access points, the security appliances. We also have uh, cloud managed switches, the mobility management for the devices, phones and security cameras. All of this is managed through the same interface that you've just been looking at. So you log in one time and no matter how many different uh, device types you have, they're all gonna be listed in the on the left hand side. Uh, so you, you have a true single pane of glass uh, solution here for managing a comprehensive IT deployment. In terms of next steps, just before we get to the questions, uh, we would love to uh, get you onto an evaluation. So we hope you enjoy your free wireless access point, but obviously if you'd like to try out anything else at all that we've talked about, particularly those security appliances that we've focused on uh, today's session, uh, then do please uh, reach out to us through the website that's on the page there, meraki.cisco.com forward slash eval. We are very happy to ship out any equipment from our portfolio for you to try out uh, to see if it's a good fit for you. It's an absolutely risk-free option. The blog site that we maintain is really our mouthpiece. So when we're introducing new features and capabilities, uh, that's the place that we announce them first. I just put a blog post up a little earlier this morning about some new features we've put onto our, our uh, uh, cloud managed phone. And so that's the place to go. You can subscribe very easily if you're interested in following our work there. Now, of course, some contact details. So do please reach out to us, not only to get your free access point, but also to see how uh, we could possibly make a difference to your business. Okay, so we have, let me see what the time is. We have five minutes to have a look at some of the questions that have come in. So what I'll do now is just have a look at the, uh, the Q&A panel and see what, uh, what questions we have. And then I'll be able to share some of those with you. And Blaine, uh, we might bring you in on a couple of these. If you do have any other questions uh, that uh, you haven't yet typed in for either for uh, us at Meraki or for Blaine specifically, uh, now's your opportunity to do that. So bear with me a second, let me have a quick look at the list here. There's a question here about our HIPAA compliance. Uh, yes, we absolutely do use a third party to, uh, to achieve that uh, HIPAA compliance. Uh, same with PCI, and we're also compliant to um, SSAE 16, which is uh, one of the main data center standards in use as well. We use third parties for uh, daily uh, penetration testing of our environments as well. So we are maintaining those data centers as reliably as we possibly can for our customers. Uh, so great question here about uh, just clarification on the VPNs and is it compatible with IPsec? Yes, we use IPsec technology. So whilst we make it look incredibly easy on the dashboard and that's our intent, uh, underneath the covers, we are still using completely standard IPsec protocols. So 
So all we're doing here is removing some of the elements that traditionally had to be configured manually. Uh, it sounds like Blaine and myself, we've both been through this in the past. It can be very, very time consuming. There's uh, all sorts of potential problems you can run into with things like uh, network address translation. Uh, so our auto VPN really makes life much easier, but it does enable us to interoperate with other vendors' uh, VPN solutions if we need to. So uh, Blaine, we've got uh, questions come in here about uh, whether you're making use of any of our switches at the moment. Sounds like an opportunity for a sales pitch if you're not. <laughs> Actually, yeah, at the time we were deploying the Rocky, we didn't really see the need for a cloud controlled switch and we were kind of happy with our Cisco equipment. So that was already pretty much needed at that time. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, that gives me an opportunity to talk about how wonderfully we interoperate with other uh, other network equipment that's out there anyway. Uh, so there's a question here about how you're using uh, VLANs, Blaine. Do you want to just, uh, is, there, is there anything you can share with us in terms of how you choose to segment your network to uh, to help it run more efficiently? Well, every every job site's on its own LAN segment. Um, we haven't gone overboard with VLAN in our network per se. We do try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, you know, we do have the VLAN, of course, for the Azure environment. Um, we're basically um, just VLAN in the public and private for our Wi-Fi environment also to kind of give that separation of networking. Okay. That's, that's helpful. Uh, so we've had a couple of questions here, which I think we may have covered during the demo, so covering things like um, the security elements on the box, the, uh, the setup of uh, VPNs, the traffic shaping stuff we touched on already. Uh, so that's all good. We talked about the backup options with 3G LTE as well. If you're interested in exploring more about that, you can find that on our website at documentation.meraki.com. That's the place to go uh, to get if you really want to get into the details about how every aspect of our technology works. So the question here about how we identify uh, different traffic types, you know, we showed that to you just a moment ago in terms of network visibility. Uh, the trick here is something called deep packet inspection. So as traffic is passing through Meraki device, uh, we're performing that deep packet inspection on the traffic itself to help us identify patterns. And our engineers have learned what the patterns are for all these different types of applications that we live with day to day, things like Gmail, things like uh, Salesforce, things like Spotify. So it's easy for us to be able to uh, depict those on the dashboard for our customers. It also makes it very easy to set up things like traffic shaping. In the example that we showed of Blaine's network, uh, he's using some uh, some bespoke applications and so he's setting up his own ports on there. But it's also possible to select options that say things like Spotify or Facebook. So you can uh, you can either filter on a, on a firewall or you can uh, do traffic shaping on any kind of common application that you can name, or indeed you can do those custom apps as we've seen. It looks like we've reached the top of the hour, so it's time for me to wrap things up, unfortunately. It sounds like we could probably go on for a little bit longer, but uh, we've all got uh, the rest of our days to get on with. I'd like to thank you very much indeed for your time and attention joining us today. Uh, it's been a very interesting webinar indeed, hearing about uh, a real customer experience. And Blaine, I'd like to thank you very much indeed for uh, agreeing to come along and join us today and share your experiences. I know that uh, the attendees find this kind of stuff very, very interesting, so thank you. Thank you, you're welcome. All right, so hope you enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thank you again for joining us, and we do look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.